Hey, Cosmic Explorers, welcome back to the channel. Look up at the night sky. Every single one of those twinkling lights is a star, just like our own Sunday. They seem eternal, don't they? But just like everything in the universe, even stars have a lifespan. And their deaths? Well, they're some of the most spectacular, violent, and beautiful events you could ever imagine. Before we talk about death, let's briefly recap a star's life. Stars are born from giant clouds of gas and dust, collapsing under their own gravity. Once hot and dense enough, nuclear fusion ignites in their core. That's where hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium, releasing enormous amounts of energy. This fusion is what makes a star shine, and it's what keeps it stable for billions of years, balancing the inward pull of gravity with the outward push of radiation. But that fuel, the hydrogen in the core, isn't infinite. Eventually, a star begins to run out of it. For stars like our sun, medium-sized stars, this is where things get interesting. As the core runs low on hydrogen, it starts to contract and heat up. This increased heat causes the outer layers of the star to expand dramatically. Our sun, in about five billion years, will become a red giant. It will swell up so much that it will likely engulf Mercury and Venus, and even reach Earth's orbit. It will be a colossal, red-hot behemoth, but paradoxically, its surface will be cooler than it is now. For these medium-sized stars, the end isn't an explosion, but a rather beautiful, albeit drawn-out, farewell. As the red giant continues to expand, its outer layers become very weakly bound by gravity. Eventually, these layers drift off into space, forming a stunning, expanding shell of gas and dust. We call these planetary nebulae, though they have nothing to do with planets. They're just spherical or oddly shaped clouds illuminated by the dying star at their center. What's left behind at the center is the star's incredibly dense core. This is a white dwarf. It's about the size of Earth, but it contains roughly the mass of our sun. Imagine squeezing our entire sun into a ball the size of Earth. That's how dense a white dwarf is. There's no more fusion happening here. It's just a slowly cooling ember, destined to fade away over billions and trillions of years into a black dwarf, a theoretical object that will be completely cold and dark. Now, let's talk about the rock stars of the cosmos, the massive stars. These are stars many, many times larger than our sun. They live fast and die young, burning through their fuel at an incredible rate. Their end isn't a gentle puff, but an absolutely cataclysmic explosion called a supernova. When a massive star runs out of fuel, its core collapses incredibly rapidly under its own immense gravity. This collapse happens in a fraction of a second, and it's so powerful that it causes a rebound effect, sending a shockwave outwards through the star. This shockwave rips the star apart in an explosion so bright it can briefly outshine an entire galaxy. Supernovae are not just spectacular. They are vital to life as we know it. All the elements heavier than iron, the gold in your jewelry, the copper in your wires, the uranium for nuclear power, were forged in the fiery heart of a supernova explosion. We are literally made of star stuff. So, what's left after such an immense explosion? It depends on just how massive the original star was. If the original star was between about 8 and 20 times the mass of our sun, the core that's left behind is so dense that electrons and protons are crushed together to form neutrons. This creates a neutron star, an object so incredibly dense that a sugar cube of its material would weigh a billion tons. 
They're typically only about 20 kilometers in diameter, but they pack in more mass than our entire Sunday. Some neutron stars spin incredibly fast, emitting beams of radiation, which we detect as pulsars. But if the original star was even more massive, say, more than 20 to 30 times the mass of our sun, then even the immense pressure of neutrons can't resist the gravitational collapse. The core continues to shrink, becoming infinitely dense, and creating a black hole. A black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. They're the ultimate cosmic devourers, but they're not cosmic vacuum cleaners. You still need to get very close to one to be pulled in. They are perhaps the most mysterious and extreme remnants of a star's life. So, the death of a star isn't just an end. It's a beginning. The material expelled by planetary nebulae and especially supernovae, rich in newly forged elements, drifts out into interstellar space. And what happens there? These cosmic dust and gas clouds become the nurseries for the next generation of stars and planets. Our own solar system, including our Earth and every atom in our bodies, is a testament to this cosmic recycling. We are quite literally built from the ashes of dead stars. Every breath you take, every cell in your body, carries the legacy of a star that lived and died billions of years ago. From the gentle puff of a planetary nebula to the cataclysmic blast of a supernova, the death of a star is a journey of immense power, beauty, and cosmic significance. It reminds us of the constant cycle of creation and destruction that governs our universe. If you found this cosmic journey fascinating, hit that like button, subscribe for more astronomical adventures, and let me know in the comments. What's the most mind-blowing fact you learned about dying stars? Keep looking up.